Kings Mill in the West, particularly in the U.S., in its trade talks with China, there's a lot of discussion around uh, clean energy manufacturing over capacity. Could you explain what that's what uh, uh, is meant by that? Well, uh, over capacity is an interesting word. Um, it, there is more capacity than we currently use um, to uh, manage. Sorry, than we currently need to manufacture solar panels and batteries and Let's be clear, this is a good thing. Um, so we already have in China, again, it depends on the day you pick, but well over a thousand gigawatts, probably actually close today to 2000 gigawatts of manufacturing capacity to make solar panels. We have enough um, manufacturing capacity to make about twice as much batteries as we currently require. Um, and and that's, that's a good thing. The reason why it's a good thing is because it basically drives prices down. It stops companies having super profits as always with manufactured technologies um and then uh it, it as it drives prices down drives volumes up and then you know uh, then you get the um the flywheel of of growth going so yeah this is it, it again it's one of these bizarre aspects of the uh energy system that people have portrayed as a bad thing it's a very good thing at the same time you also have um over capacity in the lng space so there's a lot more lng export capacity that's being put into place than demand that is likely to materialize. So the world is set up um, in the second half of this decade and the 2030s for a massive fight between overcapacity um, for solar and overcapacity for LNG. And I can tell you with absolute certainty that solar was going to win this battle hands down. LNG hasn't got a chance. And the reason it hasn't got a chance is because it's much more expensive. The sun is free. And its costs keep on falling over time. You can put up these panels in six weeks. LNG's got a five-year time frame. Um, you know, the sun is is local. LNG is imported by people who, you know, might close off the taps tomorrow if they don't like your um, foreign policy. So, you know, it, it's uh, it, it's going to be a an extraordinary battle of overcapacities to watch. And, you know, just watch the bankruptcies coming through in the LNG sector. Um, recently, I read a comment from a, a Chinese government uh, official who was commenting on this uh, this overcapacity, and he said, it's not overcapacity at all. We just build in advance of demand. And that yeah. seems such a sensible explanation for it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, it was probably a more elegant way of putting it. I mean, although actually even even, even the dear Chinese government is now um, trying to rein, its, rein in its um, capacity because they built for a, a lot of demand. But yeah, I mean, it's true. Like, so five years ago, people thought there was far too much. And, the, you know, the bottom line is that nobody quite knows where we stop um, in terms of uh, annual demand for solar panels. But we, we at Ember for a long time uh, and before have, have said, look, we, we're definitely heading before the end of this decade to over a thousand gigawatts of solar being sold um, per annum, which, you know, looks like we're actually going to hit it now in 2028 or something. But, um, and, and, uh, but, but, you know, five or 10 years ago, that seemed completely impossible. Um, just as a very quick aside, it, it, it's worthwhile thinking about the capital expenditure to build these solar panel factories. Actually, really small. It's about fifty billion dollars to make a thousand billion, sorry, a thousand gigawatts of of capacity. Um, and you contrast that with the, this report the IA has just done, saying that it's four hundred billion dollars per annum to maintain the oil system. It just gives you a little sense of how much cheaper the um, uh, renewables system is is going to be to. To, to, to maintain. It also gives you a sense, incidentally, of the fact that if there is a you know really big split between China and the West, you know, we can we can put up our own solar solar panel factories. It might cost a lot more, but but still it's just considerably cheaper than maintaining the current system. Well, let's talk about that because um when the Biden administration was in power uh, in the United States, so we're talking about uh, 2021 to 2020 uh, early 2025, uh, they identified the clean electrotech manufacturing capacity as a major vulnerability, geopolitical and economic, for the U.S. They said, look, if we ever get into a conflict with China, they control our supply chains and our supply of batteries and solar panels. Yep. So we have to build our own. And then, of course, you know, uh, President Donald Trump has, has dismantled many of those programs. But here's my question. Is it important that the West have its own electrotech manufacturing industry, or can it work with China, uh, where maybe the West is innovating, maybe it's integrating, maybe it's doing other things, but not manufacturing? 
look, I, you know, I think the answer is if this is just basic risk management. If if you're running any business, you don't want to have all of your supply coming from a single supplier. So, you know, however cheap the Chinese supply may be, you, you definitely want to have um, one or two alternatives where you're getting a certain amount from. And that's, of course, you know, the basis, for example, of the European um, policy. They, they don't want to have more than 50 percent coming from any one country. So it's a basic it's a simple question of risk management, not to have all of your eggs in one basket. Um, the second point is you precisely as you say, Mark, you know, there's plenty of things to specialize in. Um, you, know, you can do cables, you can do transformers, you can do software. I mean, you don't have to make the solar panels and and it's quite funny when you take this laptop that you know i'm talking on that that's made in china you know nobody seems to obsess about that um and and and, and uh, then the third point to make about about solar panels specifically this is an incredibly dumb thing to worry about the fact that solar panels are made in china you buy a solar panel um at, at 10 cents a watt so you know 400 watt solar panels about 40 watts or call it 500 watts so about 50 watts um, sorry, $50. The, the the manufacturer very kindly is making this incredible piece of kit for you for $50. They might make 10% profit. That's $5. Stick it on your roof. It's got an MPV of at least 500. You know, if you don't buy that Chinese soda panel, who's, who's losing? You who loses 500 or the Chinese manufacturer who loses five? I mean, it's it's actually a completely stupid debate. And, and what we need to be thinking much more intelligently about is okay let's take this kit and let's use it to drive down our own prices and then we can compete in lots of other sectors um because if, if china's got a monopoly on making and deploying the best mousetrap and we don't we're going to fall further behind the, that leads me to my final question uh king's mill is the, the chinese government for the last 15 20 years has had a very clear strategy uh, to grow its electrotech manufacturing uh, capacity. And it's very strategic. They put in industrial policies to implement the strategy. And, and, you know, they had a plan. And the West seems to be struggling with that. Uh, I mentioned the U.S. just a moment ago. Um, and, but you've also said to, to me during interviews, it's a long race. And so do you think in the long race in the competition with, with Asia over uh, manufacturing capacity that the West will get its act together, get us get strategies in place, and eventually they'll figure out a way to compete. Well, nothing's guaranteed, right? I mean, you know, take China in eighteen hundred. China was the world's wealthiest nation and and had been for centuries, and they failed to innovate around the, this new fossil technology that was coming out of the West, you know, and the result was the, the century of, of humiliation, as they call it. Um, you know, we don't get our act together, then we too will face a century of humiliation. Um, and we, yeah, so, so we, we need to get a grip and, and we need to have, we, you know, stop shilly shelling, we need to have proper plans, we need to work out where our strategic advantages lie. And, you know, there is in tremendous grounds for hope. I mean, there are, there are entrepreneurs all across Europe. We work. We have the pleasure of working with some of them. Um, you know, there are countries like like Sweden or Uruguay, um, or, or, or for that matter, uh, Vietnam um, or Chile, uh, which are you know doing very proactive stuff out there. So you know, it, it's a big world, and people can innovate all all all, all, all over the place. Um, so you know, but we you know we do need to have an adult conversation this is in the uk at the moment for example we have these completely childish debates not debates actually people shouting at each other about you know what's caused the price of electricity to rise and you know some of the parties say it's because of gas other parties say it's because of um wind you know or, or ccs whatever it is but we just actually need to sit down do some proper analysis figure out what's driving up the price and then and then reduce it and 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 if we don't we're just going to get buried by competition so it's kind of it is a choice now for each country. Either you engage as adults with reality or you just pretend it's not happening and lose.